unos 15 años que no se usaba. Tal vez no les gustarán las piscinas. Hi Bryce, I'm Rafa from Ecartelera, Spain. How are you today? Hasta bien, igual. <laughs> well, well, I'm so excited to talk to you and first of all, congratulations on this big jump to Hollywood. Um how these these horror giants like Jason Blum and James Wan arrive at your idea and what have they provided in comparison to your short film? Yeah, um the you know the first person that really came on board after making the short film was James Wan. And uh, he, he saw the short film. He was swimming in his pool at night and he was doing the, uh, you know, freestyle this way. You breathe this way, this way, and then Gah! he thought he saw something in the left hand side looking over the pool at him. And he was like, came and was like, man, like your, your short film scared me last night in my pool. So we have to do this together. And to hear that from, J to, from James Wan, it's just like, he's the master, he's the horror master. So that was so um, exciting for me and, uh, Yeah, and he, and he continued just to be like such a great collaborator. And you know, he would, we, we'd look at storyboards together. We'd, look, we'd talk about creature design together. We'd pitch ideas back and forth. And he'd be on set like for you know, Marco Polo and just be like in my corner, just like, well, what if we did this? Or da -da -da, just like adding little things, um, which you know, for my first feature film, having someone like James Wan, who's just such a, a legend and a master of the genre was like, What, what an amazing education experience for me just to kind of learn, learn from him and, and work with him and see how his mind works. So I, I just feel like the, the best possible person in the world to get to make this movie with. And, uh, and, and, and Jason Blum, same thing. He's been such a great advocate and ally on this movie. And if you, if you reach a mountain that seems impossible to move, Jason Blum is the one that can move that mountain. He's the 500 pound gorilla that has, you know, if you need the governor's <laughs> number in the phone, he's the one that can pick that up and make that call and, and, and make shit happen for you. So, and, and he cares about his fans. He cares about the genre so much. He's such a, he's such an uncynical person. It's, it's really like, it's truly like not about the money for him, even though he's a businessman and he makes a lot of money. It's like, I can just tell how much he loves those fans and loves the people that watch his horror movies and uh, it am amazing experience with both of them. Mm, yeah, so beautiful. And um, now you as the director, um, I imagine it would have been much easier to have like a physical monster to show in order to make people afraid. So how did you manage to turn uh, a static object uh, as a pool into a terrifying monster? Well, yeah, I think it was just going back into how it felt to be a kid when your imagination's kind of running wild. And we're all the things that could be scary from a pool. So, you know, reaching into the drain flap and feeling whatever's in there, pulling out that hair. I just remember doing that as a, as a kid. Or even like, you know, being, you know, being beneath the, uh, the diving board and hearing the and like something's up there, but you can't see it. Um, you know, the Marco Polo, it's like you take, away, you take away the sight and then it's just the sound and like the little bit you can see through the kind of breaking the eyelids and, and so it, it makes the pool feel bigger and scarier by by leaning into those like those memories we have and all the different locations and aspects of the pool um, you know what comes up through the drain you know and then of course literally expanding the pool into this larger more you know this unpredictable space where like it's not as small as you think it is there is more to the pool and there's more, there's more down there than, uh, than people know. And when people watch the movie, they'll, they'll get to experience that. But uh, yeah, I think it's like, it's almost like the Trojan horse idea, right? Where it's like the fact that the pool seems kind of safe at the beginning is actually a part of what makes it fun when something like, oh, I didn't know the pool could do that. Ooh, I didn't know the pool could do that. Ooh, I'd never thought about that before. I feel like that it, it gives you somewhere to go because you maybe underestimate the pool and you'll learn quickly never to do that again. Mm, I really loved all the perspectives you show with the camera. And I also wanted to congratulate you because I haven't seen such a beautiful and realistic cinematography with the water 
maybe seen um, Avatar, The Way of Water. Um, so how was the challenge of the light in those night and underwater sequences? And why was it so important to you to really take care of that visual aspect? Yeah, the water is in mean, the pool is a character in the movie, as you as you said. And so we we did a lot of testing and um, research and, and kind of developed different strategies for showing the pool in, in different ways. So we'd have um, certain lenses that we'd use to shoot the pool underwater that made it feel bigger. And um, we did a bunch of uh, like, you know, like the caustics, which is like the, the pool kind of like light that cast on the side of the house. We did so many different tests of like, what's the perfect frequency of that movement and what's the perfect kind of like thickness of those lines. And, um, and then we worked with an amazing underwater cinematographer, Ian Takahashi, and he's done huge, huge underwater stuff. And I just knew that like the special, the magic of this movie was going to be in the water. So we had to find the right pool. We had to find the right lenses. We had to light it and find the right color too, because there's, there's two different colors. In the daytime, that blue of the pool is actually like the blue that's scientifically um, designed to like trigger happiness and like serotonin in your brain. So when you're, when you see that blue, you're like, oh, this feels so good. I want to be in there. I want to be swimming. Like this is a vibe. And then at night, it shifts that kind of more cyan, uh, turquoise kind of green. And then you start to shape shadows. And you're like, oh, there's parts of the pool corners because it's such a deep pool that I can't quite see and and when you're above water you're like I'm losing visibility and so there's more threat there's more mystery so it was just really just leaning into every possibility that you had to give life to the water and make it a character because I knew that was going to be so important to the concept of the movie and the experience of the movie mm, wow such a huge work um I would love to keep talking to you, but that's all. So yeah, you thank you so much for your time and congratulations and good luck with the movie. Can't wait to see what you do next. Okay, gracias por todo. Chao, nos vemos. Gracias a ti. Buen día. Good day. Okay, buen día.